Hi, I'm Eitan and welcome to Wix Wiz. Notice the change in name there. And today I'm going to be revisiting the topic of custom product pages using Wix code uh, because of your request for me to kind of go a little more in depth on some of the topics that I touched on on the previous tutorial. In general, we're going to be taking a slightly different approach to creating the custom product pages here, which I think might be a little more efficient than what I showed you in the previous tutorial. Uh, in general, what we're gonna try and do is replicate this product page from Etsy. So we're gonna try and create this look and feel on Wix to the extent that we can. And in order to do that, I've already installed the Wix stores app. If you're not familiar with how to do that, then you would just go here to the left side to add apps and search for Wix stores. After you install it, then you will have several pages, one of which is the product page, which is what we will be customizing. So this app that you see here by Wix is kind of like a closed box. And in terms of what can be customized, you're slightly limited. So you have some options for customization if you click on settings and then go over here to design, you'll see that some of the elements here can be changed, but there are some limitations. And especially if you want to add some additional functionality to this page, uh, you wanna make some kind of calculation, you want to somehow display things in a different way, then you might need to completely customize the product page. And the way we're gonna do that in this tutorial is using dynamic pages. Uh, so if you're not familiar, dynamic pages are pages in Wix that are linked to a collection so that each item in the collection displays its own page and is connected to that item via a data set. So in order to create a dynamic pages for Wix product pages, what we're going to need to do is first turn on dev mode. And after we turn on dev mode, this will give us access to the behind the scenes collections in Wix, uh, such as the Wix stores collections. So now that I've turned on dev mode and I go over here to databases, then you'll see here that I have Wix app collections on the bottom. And if I go into stores, then you'll see here that I have a collection for products. I'm sorry that it's on the very bottom. And in here are all the data fields of a Wix uh, product. And if I go over here to the three dots and I say, add dynamic item page, then Wix will create dynamic pages on our website corresponding to the items in the product collection. And I'm just using the basic products that come with the Wix uh, app template. So you can see here that we have a page and we have a data set over here, which is a product, product item. And you can see here that some of the elements on the page are already linked to this dynamic data set. And this is the title of the product, a description, image, okay? But obviously this is not the layout that we want for our product page, uh, but this will let us uh, customize the look and feel of our product page. Uh, one more thing that I should say uh, as a principle for this tutorial. Uh, if you head over to your dashboard, then you'll see that you can access all of your products over here from the dashboard. And one of the things that we're going to try and do in this tutorial is make sure that you can still manage your products completely through this, this dashboard. Uh, and that means that each of the fields in this dashboard, which corresponds to one of the fields in the product's uh, data set, will need to be able to be edited through the dashboard and for the changes to be reflected on the product page that we're going to build. Um, so we still want to use this nifty um, dashboard in terms of adding products and editing products and for the changes that we make here to be reflected on our custom product page as if we were using the Wix app. So uh, with that said, let's head back to the product page. And as you can see here, these um, existing elements are linked to the data set using the Wix um, 
element data con connection. I don't know what you would call it. Um, but you can see here this little uh, green squiggly line. So if that was black, then it would mean that it wasn't connected. But green means that it's connected. And you can see here that it's connected to the data set product item. And this is connected to the source uh, main media image. OK. And if I go into this, it'll be connected to title, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and actually get rid of almost all the elements on this page. And I want to focus just on the image. OK, so there are two ways to go about in terms of connecting the data from this data set to uh, our elements on the page. So one is using the native Wix connection, so that's like this. And the other option is using code. So if I go down here into our code editor, and I, first of all, import. First, I'm going to, um, actually, I don't need to import anything, to be honest, uh, because we have this as a data set. So I'm actually just going to make sure that our data set is ready. So dynamic data set, that's the name of this data set right over here that our product is connected to. You can change the name if you want. And usually anything that we do with a data set in Wix, first we're going to want to make sure that the data set is ready. So I'm first going to create an on ready event listener. And then any code that I'm going to write regarding this dynamic data set, I'm going to write within this uh, callback function. And let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing over here. So over here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to get all of the data from this item. So I'm going to say um, const product. And that will be equal to dynamic data set dot get current item. OK? And if we just say console.log product, then when I run a preview, you'll see that this will return for us all of the data in an object uh, as if we were querying the product's data set. So let's go into preview mode. <coughs> and you can see here in our console that we have all of this data over here. OK, and this is the second way that we are going to be uh, using the data in our custom product page. For example, I have here main media. OK, so you can see here that if I want to change, for example, this image using Wix code, then I would need to tap into this main media um, property over here. OK, so let's show you how to do that. So if I go back to the editor, and I'm going to disconnect this from, I'm going to disconnect this image from our data set. So I'm going to go click over here, and I'm going to disconnect this. OK, so now this image is no longer connected to data, and you can see that it changed to this kind of default Wix uh, image over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect this image using um, Wix code. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to say image, OK, because that's the ID of this image in, uh, in Wix, uh, sorry, in our, uh, on our website. OK, see the ID is image. And I'm going to say the source of this image should be equal to product dot main media. OK, and this should have the same exact effect as connecting it using the native Wix connection. So I'm going to go back here over here into preview mode. And you'll see that it might take a second for the image to load. But you can see here that our image is still displaying the correct image once I load my site. Uh, and that is because we connected it using code. So these are the two ways that you can approach connecting things uh, to the data when you're creating your custom uh, product page. And there's no right or wrong, but in general, using code will 
give you a little more flexibility in terms of what you can do. And eventually you probably will hit some walls where you will need to use code. So just have in mind that you have both, uh, you have two ways of approaching this. And we're really going to need Wix code for the demonstration in the next video, which will be how to add all those additional little images. Like for example, in Etsy, you see here we have our main media and we also have additional images here on the side. And that's what we're gonna to be touching on in the next video. So if you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time.